What's up guys, today I'll be going over the new Witch and her exotic bow that is found from the dungeon, the Shattered Throne, on the Dreaming City. Now I'm not going to show off how to get this weapon in this video, I'm just going to be breaking down if it's good or not, if it's worth the grind to get it, and overall how it performs versus other bows and things like that in the game. The quest itself is pretty short, but there's some pretty confusing parts, so that in itself is a whole nother 10 minute video. And the man, the myth, the legend, Dado already made a pretty good video covering all the steps to get this weapon, so I'm going to go ahead and link his video down below if you still need to get this weapon and you need to know how to get the weapon. But my video will be mostly breaking down and comparing it to other weapons, and then also my overall opinion on the weapon, whether or not you should be using it or not. So let's get started with the perks. Queen's Wrath, while aiming down the sights with a fully drawn bow, enemies behind walls are highlighted. High tension string, anti-taken fletching, which gives you more accuracy versus taken targets, I believe. I don't know if that's exactly what it does. Then the broadhead, piercing arrowhead that damages the target on entry and exit. One shot can over penetrate multiple targets. So there's some pretty interesting things going on with this exotic bow. So let's first show off some just general gameplay and explain some of the things. So the first thing you're going to notice when you're fully ADS with the bow drawn back, you can now see like the enemies highlighted almost like the true sight on the new Void Hunter. And you can kind of see their outlines even when you're looking at them, then also through walls within a certain radius. It's not forever, but it's pretty cool. Then also the other part of this bow is the over penetration. As you see, I can clat a few of these enemies and also on the knights and things like that, you'll notice it hit twice on entry and exit. So now let's go into further detail about these perks. So back to the Queen's Wraith, the whole ADS through walls and wall hack scene. As you see with the bow fully drawn back, I can now see through the walls forever until I shoot the shot because I can't hold the shot forever. So it's only when you have it fully drawn back, that way it's slightly balanced. And in PvE, I actually think this is pretty useful, not only for seeing positions of enemies, but it's also like an indicator of when the bow is ready to be fired. The other main perk of this weapon is Broadhead, where it pierces through multiple enemies and it also does damage on entry and exit, which is very interesting and it, in a way, it almost doubles the damage, which is very interesting and it actually changes a lot how you use bows in PvE, and it's kind of like this new like learning curve. As you see, I can line up two enemies and shoot them and it goes through both of them, so you can like obviously clap people in PvE and PvP, which means as you get better and better with the bow, you can actually be killing multiple PvE targets at once, which means it's double as effective, which is very, very cool. Now, will that be happening all the time? No, but there's a lot of scenarios and strikes and whatnot where there's a lot of low-tier enemies funneling in from the same direction. As you see with these throw right here, all three of them are all running at me, and it's very easy to line them up very quickly. And that worm in on the ground kind of like freaked me out for a second. I've never seen that before. But then the other part of this perk is where it does damage on entry and exit. As you saw right there, that's what one headshot does. Then the exit always does the same amount of damage, even on body shots as you see right there, which means body shots do a lot of damage. So let's compare it to a different bow. The other kinetic bow in the game, then the turning back is the one I'm gonna compare because it's the most similar one. And as you see, this is a headshot with the bow. Now here in a second, I'm gonna go ahead and do a body shot so you can see and I'm gonna compare the numbers between the Wish Ender, the Exotic, then also this one. Now this one does have a lower impact value, but it's the nearest bow I could find in the game. So for headshots, the Wish Ender hit 2637 and the No Turning Back hit 1578. So the Wish Ender does 67% more damage on headshots and PvE. Now for body shots, the Wish Ender hit 2066 and the No Turning Back hit 1055. So it does 96% more damage on body shots and PvE, which is almost double damage. So this weapon does a lot of damage because of that perk alone. There's two interesting exotics you can use with this weapon. One on Hunter, the Oath Keepers, which is the ones with the bows where it charges faster, which is bugged. But the other part where you can hold the charge forever is very useful with this bow because when you have it fully charged is when you can see through walls, which means you can see through walls forever. And Bungie's already been made aware that the charging part of this exotic does not work, so once that works, it'll be even better. But as of right now, the only thing Oath Keeper does for this weapon is allow you to see through walls forever. Now, my favorite thing to pair with this bow is the Chromatic Fire on Warlock, which is the one where you get Firefly for all precision kills with whatever kinetic weapon you have. And as you see, it's just Firefly on a bow. And I really like Firefly on bows because it kind of helps it be able to deal with a lot of low tier adds in one general area, which is why I really like using this chest piece. Now I'm going to compare this bow to the Arsenic Bite, which is the arc one that always comes with Archer's Tempo and Rampage, which is considered the best bow in the game for PvE currently. So I'm going to go ahead and compare it and see where it lines up in terms of damage per second and things like that. So first with the Wish Ender, finding out how much it does on a single shot. Right there on the night, it hits that number twice. And also now testing the rate of fire. And you can tell when this gun is ready to shoot by the lights on the side, then also the sound. So go ahead and shoot two shots, and it takes 3.142 seconds to shoot both shots. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it with the Arsenic Bite. Do the same thing, just with its base damage and base rate of fire at first. So right there, it hits 65, 76. Then I'm gonna go ahead and shoot two shots. And with this one, you can tell when it's ready by the sound, then also when the bars below it disappear. So once again, two shots. Takes 2.288 seconds, so we can figure the damage per seconds of both little bows now. The Wush Ender is 8,061, and the Arsenic is 5,748. So if so far, the Wush Ender is still better damage per second than the Arsenic. But now let's take advantage of both Archer's Tempo, then also Rampage, and see where it lines up now. So first, getting up to Rampage times 3. So this is going to be like a perfect scenario type of situation. It's 10,897. Now I'm testing the rate of fire with Archer's Tempo, two shots. Now it takes 1.861, so a lot faster. So if we compare the damage now, in this perfect scenario, the Arsenic does 11,711, which is much more than the Wish Ender, but you have to have both perks proc'd at all times to hit that number. So based on that alone, you would think the Arsenic would be better for ad clear and PvE, but that's not necessarily true because of the fact that the Wish Ender can co at so it can clear the low tier ads pretty efficiently as long as you're taking advantage of that, then it's also very good against the mid to high tier ads because they can one-shot them more frequently than the lower impact bows. And also because it's a kinetic bow, you can also then use things like Chromatic Fire, which gives it Firefly, which even helps it even further in the conversation of ad clear. Now that's not for every class, that's just only a Warlock thing, but it's still something to note that this bow can be used actually pretty efficiently on Warlock. Now let's go ahead and move over to PvP. In my opinion, this is the best bow for PvP just because of the information you gain from just seeing through walls. It still takes two shots to kill, so it's not like crazy, but just the information you get, pop one quick shot, then maybe swap to your other weapon, maybe you have a hand cannon or a shotgun on. I was really enjoying using it myself. If I hit that shot right there, that would have been a 3k with the bow and it would have been pretty sick. But like right here in this scenario right here, when there's uh, two people on B, here in a second when you see me scope in, I can see where they're both at. Now that's already enough information to win that gunfight. All I have to do is swap over to a shotgun, let's say, then go rush them and I can easily kill them because I know where they are and they don't know where I am. So that information alone could gave me two kills just from knowing where they were. Obviously recording that video, I was only trying to use the bow, so in that scenario, I just try to get them with the bow. So how's it doing, game? I'll say it can get the job done. Does it do the job well? Yeah, kind of. It, it's good for ad clear, especially on like the knights. It, it can one shot or two shot them, and then like the wizards, once you get the shield down, it's a one shot, and things like that. So like the mid to high tier ads, it works really well against them. And if you can line up the low tier ads, it works too. But for invading or killing invaders, it's not necessarily the best because it still takes two shots. And by the time you shoot them once, they now know where you're at, and you have a slow rate of fire bow. It's not like the best when you're in a four v one when they know where you're at. If it one shotted. That'd be a different situation. Since you already know where everyone is with the wall hacks and the exotic perk on this bow doesn't really matter that much because you already know where they are, the fact that it takes two shots is makes it probably not the best choice for invading in Gambit. Especially because it takes up exotic slot, which means you can't use Sleeper or 1000 Voices and you're heavy. So overall, I'd stay away from this gun in Gambit. I don't think it's a good choice at all. It is fun though. I'll give it that. So overall in PvE, I think it's probably the best bow in the game because of the fact that it can collat and also the fact that it's such a high impact weapon. It's kind of like the sniper version of a bow in a way with the fact that it's such high impact it can collat things and also how much information you can get from just the exotic perk seen through walls and whatnot for both PvP and PvE. Now some of the faster rate of fire bows like the Arsenic Bite can out damage it in terms of damage per second. But you can say the same thing for things like Whisper of the Worm versus Darcy. The Darcy could out DPS it in the short term, but the Whisper out damages it in the long term by a lot. And guess what? Whisper Worm is still the most used exotic in the game, probably in PvE. So the fact that it lacks in damage per second isn't holding it back at all. And it's kind of the same for the Wish Enter. Yeah, there's some other options in the game that can maybe do more damage per second than it, but the fact that it can one shot these high tier adds and one shot multiple low tier adds at the same time is already enough to make it useful in some scenarios. Now, is this a weapon you're going to be using all the time? No, it's exotic, which means it takes up your exotic slot, which means you can't use things like Whisper the Worm, 1000 Voices, or, you know, all that good stuff in PvE. But is it something that you're going to use in some scenarios? Yeah, for sure. For example, in the boss room of the strike I'm showing on screen right now, the Hallowed Lair, when there's like 40 low tier ads all running in a straight line at me and I can clap multiple of them, then also if I get a headshot with Chromatic Fire, they all explode. Like, it just feels really good and it's actually pretty useful in that scenario. Overall, I think it's a very unique weapon, and I think it does have a spot in the game. Now, exactly where that is, that's yet to be determined, but I'm excited to use it in the future. Anyways, let me know what you think about this weapon, if you have it, or based on this gameplay. Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.